Hello listeners and welcome to another edition of uh, Turf Talk. I'm your Alex, Michael Cade, and I'm here to take you through a preview of the upcoming 11 race card that's going to be on show on Saturday, the 29th of October 2022. It's Cash Pot at Cape Anna Spark and you know whenever Cash Pot is at Cape Anna Spark is a lot of excitement and uh, we look forward to uh, it being just the same this year. The Cash Pot 01 for me trophy that's going to be the main feature. That's going to be race number 7 on the card. It's the 18th running of the cash pot owner one for me trophy the purse is 3.25 million and we see a field of six two years going a distance of 1200 meters or six four dogs and that looks to be a very 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 competitive event all the other races on the card named after cash pot uh, so it's going to be cash pot in all its glory at cape and spark on the 29th of october first post is at 11 a.m and we have 11 races so it's going to be a very 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 challenging card and when you have challenging cards you have very very big payouts as well the first event is the Cashbot Sprint Trophy. It's an 80-bed 4 nuns of 3 and Importies 4 nuns of 2. It's a restricted allowance for the purse is 750000 You have a field of 9, set to go a distance of 1,300 meters or 6.5 furlongs. My best 4 includes 1, Silver Fox, 4, Great Brit, 6, King Antelope, and 7, Charming Beauty. 1, 4, 6, and 7. That's where we're going to go in the Cashbot Sprint Trophy. Number 1 is Silver Fox. I told you about this one at last. My partner horse, keep on uh, uh, bringing this horse week in, week out, month in, month out. Still haven't got my partner draw. Well, I'm hoping that this time around with uh, Dean Dawkins called back to ride by Trainer Gear Sabati aboard Silver Fox. I'm hoping this time around Silver Fox will come up trumps, so to speak. Showed good pace on last. Left a half my second by head in that five and a half round contest. Won my old King Cole over Shanja's Law. Silver Fox weakened to be third. Gets a four long to travel now. Was third over seven and a half four So, this Silver Fox runs, shows good speed, then comes off the pace another time. So he's quite versatile. And I'm expecting Silver Fox not to be right there when the Cash Pot Sprint Trophy is being decided. Number four is Great Brit, O'Shea Nugent, Ryan to turn to Carl Anderson. And this one has prospects of uh, upsetting the apple cart. Was a fourth two starter back to Sweetie Man Jaded, the striker, and Old King Cole. And came back to finish down the track, 10th by 19 and a half lengths behind E and I links, Arm Run, and Silver Fox. From one of our better approaches, Great Brit should be in the thick of things throughout. And number six is King Anthelo. This one will be at a big price. Was a winner at Even Money and that. I'd make that two starts back on the 6th of August. Won by five and a quarter lengths, beating legal opportunity. And then when stepping up to Nonis of Three for the first time at 95 to 1, did absolutely nothing. Can do Oceans better, King Anthelo. You will pin up picks at the mount here for Ruan Matthew and DSTL and Associates. We're expecting a good run here from King Anthelo. Number seven is Charming Beauty. Jerome Innes, aka Cranberry Ride to Trinity Patrick Lynch and owner Eminem Racing Stable of Blue Vinyl Fame. Charming Beauty, fourth on last behind Old King Cole, Shandra's Law, and Silver Fox. And that was her second attempt at Nuns of Three Level. Look for Charming Beauty, uh, who appears to have caught the pace of this group somewhat. Look for this one uh, to be very, very prominent as well. There's a lot of word out about number nine, Ianai Lynx. Make that Ianza Lynx. Uh, this one has been working well. Abigail Abel asked to ride by Trainer Jason Nakasa. He's a leading trainer. And Ianza Lynx working well. Let's see if this one will live up to the hype, uh, so to speak. I'm going to go 1, 4, 7, and 6 in the Cash Pot Sprint Trophy, and that's Silver Fox to get the better of Great Brit, then Charming Beauty and King Antelope. Regga 6 starts off in race number 1, and the Regga 6 minimum guarantee pay is 2 million. The Regga 6 jackpot stands at over $2.395 million. And please note that on Sunday, it will be mandatory payout in the Regga 6. So, big, big things on Sunday with the Regga Six. Race number two is next, and this is the cash pot winning trophy. But just forget to that. Let me tell you that uh, Dr. Paul Light's tip is number four, Great Brit, and my tip is number one, Silver Fox. Haven't heard from the horsemen, so we wait for their selections to come in a little bit later on. So myself and Doc will be giving you our choices for the cash pot race card. Race time, we should hear uh, from the horsemen. Race number two is next, the cash pot winning trophy. This is a four. Native bread for the dump nuns of two and importies for the dump maidens. It's a restricted allowance five. The purse is 720000 a field of seven. They clear to go postwards. And we start the play spot eight here. Minimum guarantee paid is 250000 And the most recent race day, we had a mandatory payout in the play spot. So the single the bonus starts afresh on the cash pot race day. My best four for race number two includes two fearless vibe, five Falkland, six all is vigorous, and seven hope and perseverance. Two, five, six, seven. That's why I'm going to go in the cash pot winning trophy. Number two, Fearless Vibe, and number seven, Hope and Perseverance, both trained by your Omega KLS racing personality trainer, Ryan Darby. And uh, 
Fearless Vibe was uh, deep sick when it tended to run on the 16th of October. Back here quickly. So whatever the problem there was th- uh, that day, that would have been sorted out. Here in Chatter Peaks at the Mount, and I'm expecting Fearless Vibe to run a brave race. She has one win in her career. That came over seven furlongs. So eight furlongs should be right up her street. And number seven, Hope and Perseverance, has a win. That came over seven furlongs as well. All beating 132 flat. Not a very a good time. But this Hope and Perseverance has scope to improve. Has raced six times with one win. Hope and Perseverance bred by Casamud OD of Atomic of Fame. Look for Hope and Perseverance to run a decent race here. Prince Holder, more popularly known as Dagger Master. He has been appointed to ride. Falkland number five is going to be the favorite. And should be the horse they'll all have to beat. Andrew Thomas Ride for Stephen Todd. And this one was fifth and last over seven furlongs behind Longilala. He hope prepare and all is vigorous. Back here now over eight furlongs, a much more relaxed pace. And the last time he saw Falkland at eight furlongs, he was second by two and three quarter lengths. Traditional boy. And in turn, was three quarters of, of a length clear of right in flight. Right in flight came back to front form with a win. We're next in town. So Falkland over eight furlongs, not much speed present here. I'm expecting Falkland to go to the front and play catch me if you can in the cash pot winning trophy. I'm going to make number five Falkland my top choice to get the better of number two. Fairness is five, then seven, hope and perseverance. And six, all is vigorous. Five, two, seven, six in race number two. Dr. Bolite, he agrees with me with Falkland in the cash pot winning trophy. Race number three is next. We start the catch line here, and this is the cash pot play it trophy. A field of seven, they were going a distance of 1,300 meters or six and a half four dollars a purse here. It's 730,000. My best four includes one Duke of Springs, two My Time Now, three Nina Dorada, and six Jolly's Dream. One, two, three, six. That's where we're going to go in the cash pot play trophy. Catch nine, minimum guarantee period is 500,000, and the jackpot stands at just under 993,000. Going here for Duke of Springs, Samantha Fletcher Wright for Tencent Chung, and Rohan Gordon, the owner. A model of consistency, and uh, this one has finished second. Three of the last four outings was third and last over five and a half furlongs behind his stablemate, Ultimatum. Ultimatum carried the flag that day at 6-1 to one with Anthony Thomas and got the job done. Well, there's no stablemate present here, so Duke of Springs definitely I should be in a serious hunt this time around and should take an awful lot of beating. Not much right about in terms of the opposition. My time now. Uh, we'll have a host of backers, as is the norm. This one has been proven to be very disappointing since finishing second two times early in the year in January and February. My time now has gone the wrong way uh, since then, but has turned uh, the form around in a, little, in, a, in a very interesting way. The last two times, fourth and fifth, and on the last two occasions, beaten by Duke of Springs. So, my time now. Expected to run well, but should have. Duke of Springs to contend with here. Matthew Bennett picks up the mount for Ryan Williams aboard this my time. Now, number three is Nina Dorada. Has pace and speed. Uh, should be a bit stretched at six and a half four rounds, but uh, it's a small field and pace makes the race. So listen for Nina Dorada uh, to be prompted the issue from the word gone. Jolly's Dream has been disappointed the last two outings. Hasn't been looking well, this Jolly's Dream. And we're hoping that uh, things can turn around for him sooner than later. Make it one, two, three, six in the cash pot play a trophy and that's Duke of Springs by Firm Fancy over my time now then Nina Dorada and Jolly's Dream. Dr. Paul Letter agrees with me with Duke of Springs to win the cash pot play it trophy. Race number four is next the cash pot rake trophy and you know what a rake is uh, the power of a rake <laughs> when you get a rake and you try to buy the cash pot uh, you know you have numbers one through to 36 and it would indeed be a good good thing if you got a rake to be able to narrow down your selections when playing cash pot. Two, four, eight, and nine. And I tell you, rake also goes to horse racing. Don't think that's a cash pot alone. You can get rakes in racing and win money as well. Number two, Flying Bullet. Number four, General Moonbrack. Number eight, Moon. And number nine, Party Princess. That's my idea of the quartet from which a winner I should serve us from. Number four and the fourth is a Tony Young special this week. General Moonbrack, the hit or miss general. He either wins or he either runs totally out of it. And he has run totally out of it on the last four occasions. And I've been told by good sources that General Moonrack would have been hitting his target at least once, once over the last three outings, but he has been missing miserably. Well, he's down to 180 now, and General Moonrack of old won 180 races on a common canter. So once the connections can get General Moonrack to be generous, General Moonrack with Tevin Foster for Uton Stewart and Banton no play might very well dismantle this field. But that's going to be a very big if. And I think that uh, the price that he's been getting in this race it's going to be a bargain for you to find out if Jeremy Moorback will get the job done this time around. So I'm going to make it my top choice. The 4 and the 4th, the 20 on special Jeremy Moorback to get the better of number 9, Party Princess.
That's the antipodes favorite for third, make it number eight, moon, and for fourth, make it number two, flying bullet. So it's going to be 4982, my order of preference in race number four. Dr. Paul Lightstep is the antipodes favorite, party princess. Next event on the card is going to be the fifth event, uh, the cash pot uh, canter trophy. And we have a field of eight, the critical poster. This is for the claiming group, 400,000 out of 300,000. And we have the distance here of 1,300 meters or six and a half furlongs. Early pick five will begin in race number five. My best four includes two Sala, four Slice Taloon. Well, I'm now told that Slice Taloon is a scratch, so we're going to draw a line through Slice Taloon. You heard it right here on Omega KLS Radio and Turf Talk that uh, Slice Taloon is a scratch. Let's take our mid-program break. Welcome back uh, to the program. You're still Michael Kane taking to the preview of the Cash Pot Race Day. That's going to be on show on the 29th of October, 2022. And there'll be 10 more races for you on Sunday. And it's going to be the announcer's race day on Sunday. So a lot of action over the two-day weekend carnival at Caymanus Park. It's going to be a big, big weekend at Caymanus. Red race number five on the Saturday side of the show. And it's a Cash Pot Canter Trophy. And number four is a scratch that slides the loon. We're now down to a field of seven. My best four includes two Salah, five Flowers, 36, Miss Linda Ray, and seven, King Zoo, two, five, six, and seven. That's going to go in race number five. Number two is Salah, Robert Hardball Halladine. He's back in Jamaica, and he's riding well. And uh, he won quite a few races at this lawn. One for Jason DaCosta, one for a uh, few trainers as well. And he also won races at Mountaineer. So, Robert Hardball Halladine back in action in Jamaica. He's aboard Salah. Now at six and a half furlongs. Salah was second and last over six furlongs behind Walzer. That was a downing class runner. And prior to that, Salah won over five and a half furlongs. Beat it Patman and leads the light. So Salah should go well here over six and a half furlongs. Number five is Flower 30. Third and last behind Walzer and Salah. Just half a little behind Salah. And that deal was getting five and a half kilos from Salah. Just about the same weight now. Look for Flower 30 uh, to be right there. At the business. And number six is Miss Linda Ray. Has nothing to complain about at this level. Odin Scott writes for Norman Smith. This one reports first time of the claim. And Miss Linda Ray is definitely going to make her presence felt here. Number seven is Kingswood. Uh, he was a winner last by seven lengths, beating Diligent and Mama Sharon Darling. Steps up off the claim from 250 up to 400,000. This Kingswood has back class and should still be comfortable at the 400,000 level. Anthony Thomas, the defending champion jockey, he's just two behind Dane Dawkins. And uh, Anthony teams up here with trainer Paul Hilton with Kingswood. Race number five, the Catchpot Canter Trophy. I'm going for number two, Salah, to get the better of number seven, Kingswood. Then six, Miss Linda Ray. And five, Flowers 30. Dr. Paul Light's tip is number six, Miss Linda Ray. Race number six is next. This is the cash out leg of the regular six. It's the Catchpot Bonanza Trophy. High level claimers, one million down to 800,000. The purse is 990,000. And we have a field of 10. Declared to go a distance of 1600 meters, eight furlongs, or a mile. The Twilight Six begins here in race number six. So there's one overlapping race between your regular six and Twilight Six. And that's going to be a very, very important race. The Cashbot Bonanza Trophy. My best four includes two Atlantic Blue, four Chinamax, six Blood Song, and nine Daddy Jones. Two, four, six, and nine. That's what I'm expecting the dividends to be comprised of here. For the Cashbot Bonanza Trophy. Number two is Atlantic Blue. Dane Dawkins teams up with Gear Sabrat, a very potent combination. Atlantic Blue got beaten on last by nine and a quarter lengths behind Baton Rouge and Nazaria. That was at six and a half furlongs. Should go well at a mile. And it was a winner to start to back at the 750 level, beating Angelus and Blood Song. Look for Atlantic Blue to be prominent throughout. Number four is Cinemax. Steps down from the overnight allowance level, has been at the overnight level for some time now. Last time at the one million claiming level, that was in February was fought by two and a quarter lengths of fearless champion, Mermelis and Let Him Fly. One should be reaching an effort similar to that. We should see Chinamax on the premises as well. Beaten on last by Calculus, prior to that beaten by Artesia, prior to that beaten by Hovercraft and Supreme Soul. So Chinamax takes a step down in class. Number six, Blood Song, third on last behind Atlantic Blue and Angelos. And this one ought to be kept on the right side with the inform. Ray and Lewis, more popular known as Jason. Called to right here by trainer Patrick Fong for owner of Super Kids Racing Stable. And number nine is Daddy Jones, will be the favorite, and rightfully so, was a winner at the Nuns of Four Level 2 starter back, beat Positive ID. That one came back to run a big race and win. And uh, Daddy Jones tried his uh, luck at overnight level. Fifth by 18 and three quarter behind runaway Algo, one of a kind, and Ras Emanuel. 
So now stepping in among claimers, Shane Ellis has been asked to ride by Dennis Wade's for Rabelak Collection. Daddy Jones is going to be my top choice here in the Cashpot Bonanza Trophy. Make it 9, 2, 6, and 4. That's my order of preference. Daddy Jones to get the better of Atlantic Blue, Blood Song, and Chinamax. Dr. Polite agrees with me with Daddy Jones number 9. Race number 7 is the feature of the 18th running of the Cashbot Only One for Me Trophy. It's an 80 belt 2 It's a restricted 6 event. The purse is 3.25 million. A field of 6 will go a distance of 1,200 meters or 6 furlongs. My best 4 includes 1 Mojito, 3 Legit Boss, 4 Mamma Mia, and 6 Thalita. 1, 3, 4, 6. That's where we're going to go in the Cashbot Only One for Me Trophy. Number 1 Mojito, a recent debutant, was second by 3.5 length behind Mamma Mia. That was over 5 furlongs round. Cat himself as if you really appreciate a, a trip much in excess of five furlongs round. So now he gets up further along with the travel, and with that run under his belt, this mojito should be finishing best of all from off the pace. Leading rider Dane Dawkins picks up the mount once again for trainer Richard Azan. He's a Hall of Fame trainer. Mojito looks to be a talented sword, and whatever happens, he will make his presence well felt. Number three is the lead boss. Uh, this one uh, made almost all the order the last, just got beaten in the last half of furlong by Thalita. This legit boss now has a tongue tie fitted by a champion trainer, Anthony Nunes. Dick Cardet has maintained the mount. Legit, legit boss has good speed. And there's matching speed present here, the likes of Mamma Mia. There's also the likes of Thalita. So it's definitely going to be a very, very hot pace. And uh, pace makes a race. But at the same time, the pace could very well come back uh, to the likes of Mojito, who will be running on in deep stretch. Number four is Mamma Mia. Very, very impressive on debut. Won by three and a half lengths in 101 flat. Beat Mojito and Kismet was working extremely well going into that debut victory. Five and a half four rounds in 106.3 for debutant. Well, has second time lay six now administered and Robert Hardball Halladine picks up the bond here for Jason Acosta and champion owner Carlton Watson. Mamma Mia, reportedly a classy sort and definitely showed glimpses of that on debut and must be respected. Number six is Talita, stablemate of Mamma Mia. They're also, this one is also owned by uh, Carlton Watson. They both own Carlton Watson. Anthony Thomas, who was aboard Mamma Mia on a uh, debut victory, he has also been aboard on Thalita uh, for the three outings to date. Thalita has won two races. So, Anthony Thomas, he clearly has opted for Thalita. But the word is out that Mamma Mia is just as talented as Thalita. Thalita will have the top weight, 54.5 kilos. That's going to be a factor. And uh, look at the composition of the event. It's five fillies versus one colt. The lone colt is Mojito. John Post one and he has the late kick. It's going to be a thriller for the Cashbot owner one for me trophy. Speed, speed, and more speed. Will they last or will they play into the hooves of the late charge of Mojito? Make it four, six, one, three. My order of preference, Mamma Mia over Thalita, Mojito, and Legit Boss. Dr. Polite step is number three, Legit Boss. Race number seven is going to be the big feature. Race 8 is the Cashbot Kent Trophy. A field of 9 will go a distance of 1,600 meters, 8 furlongs or a mile. The purse is 990,000. Maidens, it's a maiden special weight event. My best four includes one, Real Big Man, four, Never on a Sunday, five, Anchorman, and seven, a Shorty. One, four, five, seven. That's where we're going to go in race number 8. Real Big Man, number one. Clearly named after Desmond Anthony Lewis, a.k.a. The Big Man. And when you name a horse off uh, based on your uh, own person, you know that you must think highly of that horse. Made ability debut on the 17th of October. As a three-year-old, the season is almost over. Was served by six and three quarter lengths to another debutant, Ultimate Machine. So real big man now gets three more furlongs to work with. He carried himself as if he would really appreciate an extended journey. And real big man with that run under his belt. And second time Lasix now being administered. Real big man should now prove his worth. Number four is never on a Sunday. Second and last at 17 to 1 by five lengths behind. She's my friend and definitely showed that she's on the upgrade and she has to be kept on the right side. Also, she had Richardson Rides for trainer Maurice Crooks. So number five is Anchorman Tevin Foster for champion trainer Anthony Nunes. This one should be prominent. Has been over a mile already, twice already. Third by length and three quarters on the 20th of August behind How We Look It and Secret Emperor. And fourth by six lengths over a mile again. That was on the 24th of September behind traditional lady Don Vincenzo and Whiskey. So... Anchorman should have no problem with the distance. And number seven, a shorty, should also be comfortable at the 8 for long trip. Robert Hardball Halladine picks up the mountain for Edward Stanbury. Look for a shorty to be finishing with much effect from just off the pace as well. 
Race number eight, the cash pot Kent Trophy. Goes one, four, five, seven for me. Real big man to prove himself. Second time of asking over never on a Sunday. Then anchor man and a shorty. Dr. Paul Ice Cook Food Special is number four. Never on a Sunday. Race number nine is the cash pot extra trophy. We have a field of 11. We have a good 1,000 meters straight. It's for native bread three rows, downs of two. And importies, three rows and up. Maidens. My best four includes one, Phoenix Risen. Two, Hagao Sumai. Three, Baby Like. And ten, Freedom Street. One, two, three, ten. That's where we're going to go in the cash pot extra trophy. Number ten is Freedom Street. Uh, third on that's behind Slammer. That one was an impressive winner coming off the lengthy break. So Freedom Street. Now back over the straight course, the trip. Which uh, he won was four four down straight by a length over top it go. That one came back to win. So Freedom Street back over the straight course now. This time at five four down straight. Look for Freedom Street with the informed Ray and Lewis uh, to be having this one firing on all cylinders. Number two, Hagao Sumai has proven to be very, very disappointing. Has been the favorite every time he raced. Well, every time except maybe twice, but he's always a short price. And uh, Hagao Sumai. Now has a figure it fitted by trainer Anthony Nunes. Tevin Foster pickups at mount, replacing Anthony Thomas. Hagao Sumai can win a again. And number three is uh, Baby Like, second by just ahead on last behind Alexa Secret. Now over five straight, Dick Cardin has maintained the mouth of Filipiano D. Baby Like should be right there. In the final shakeup at number one is Phoenix Risen. Speedy sort, but shuts off in the final furlong of his races. The one draw won't help for his running style, speed and weakening. Let's see though if Phoenix Risen can hold on. Or piece of the superfecta or high five or both. Make it 10 2 3 1 in the cash pot extra trophy. Freedom Street to get the better of Hagao Sumai, Baby Like, and a Phoenix Risen. The 10th Temple Ultimate is the cash pot super dash trophy. We have a field of eight that we're going to distance of uh, 1,000 meters round. The purse 1.29 million. The best four for me 3, 4, 5, and 8. Got a girl, Duke, Madeline Sunshine, and Blue Vinyl. Madden Sunshine going from strength to strength. Steps up the open allowance after dismissing overnight allowance first time of asking. She won in 104, 3 for 5 and a half four rounds. And uh, was drawn away by 7 and 3 quarter lengths. Very impressive. Carton Watson, the champion owner. He is the owner of Madden Sunshine. Leading trainer Jason Acosta and Anthony Thomas. They'll be teaming up here with Madden Sunshine. This one looks hard to oppose. That's won four races from five starts. And that's as good as you get. And steps up to this great for the first time. But there's no great shakes here. No real proven open allowance contenders in this 10th event so make it Madeline Sunshine the horse to be on here in the cash but super dash trophy for second make it number four Duke and for third showing some respect to this year's set ledger winner Blue Vinyl for fourth make it number three got a girl Dr. Paulette agrees with me with Madeline Sunshine that 11th and final as we're running out of time in the studio here it's a cash but extra trophy and this is division two Night bread three rows nuns of two and imported maidens five for them straight the trip a field of 11. I'm going to go 1, 2, 6, 7. That's my order of preference. Rambling Rose to get the better of last bid. Rapunzel and Nefertari. 1, 2, 6, 7 in the cash pot extra trophy. Dr. Paul Knight, he agrees with me with Rambling Rose and he also agrees with me with Madeline Sunshine. That's the program for you. Turf Talk. I'm your analyst Michael Kane on behalf of our studio engineer, Nicholas Burford until it's time for live racing from Cavanaugh's Park right here on Omega KLS, the station of the stars, first post 11 a.m. Goodbye for now.